Hi everybody, welcome back to Pagan's Reading Nook. My name is Pagan, and today I am joined by literally my new two favorite authors. You guys have heard me talk about this book series, I don't know, in like four or five episodes now. I don't even remember the count. I have lost count. They are the best authors I have found. They have replaced my top favorite book of all time, which was Blood and Chocolate, and now it is Bonded by Thorns, and you guys have heard me talk and gush all about it. So... Welcome, Elizabeth and Helen, also known as Elizabeth Helen, the book writing duo. Thank you so much. We're so happy to be on the show. I'm Elizabeth. Thank you so much. And I'm the older sister, Helen. Thank you for having us. (laughs) It is so cool having you guys here. And honestly, when I first found your books, it was on a TikTok video. And I don't even know if it was your TikTok, one of y'all's TikToks or not, or if it was somebody else that was reviewing your book. I can't even remember now. And I was like, oh, that sounds like a really good book series. I want to go check it out. And so I went and I downloaded it and I read it and I'm like, oh my God. (laughs) And I told my best friend and I was like, hey, this book is on Audible because he likes to listen to his books rather than read them. I said, you need to go download it immediately, like right now. And he's like, okay. And so he did. And he was like, this is probably one of the best books I've read this year. And I was like, I know, right? And so we gushed about it. And I have recommended this book so many times. It was so good. I've read the first one twice um, because I reread it right before the second one came back, uh, came out. And because I wanted to have it all fresh in my brain. And I forgot about the emotional torture at the end that I was like, oh, God, why did you do this to me? (laughs) And when book two came out, I immediately opened it and I was like, oh, this is going to be a lot of emotional torture. Okay, okay, I'm prepared, I think. (laughs) So good. Oh, so good. I loved it. Um, So we'll just jump right in. What inspired you guys to write this series? Well, firstly, thank you so much for all that. We're so glad that you enjoyed the series. And that's exactly what we want to do is torture people, but in the best way possible. So (laughs) I'm glad to hear we accomplished that with you there. Thank you so much. It means we did our job. (laughs) Um, What inspired the series is we knew that we wanted to um, write a Why Choose Reverse Harem book. Mm -hmm. Um, just because we saw the genre was really popular and we dived into reading it and we thought there's so much potential here and we absolutely loved the books we read of authors who had already worked in the genre Um, but we saw that there wasn't a ton of why choose in the fantasy space there had been like quite a bit in like mafia and um, like dark romance and not quite as many in fantasy so we thought we wanted to combine our favorite genre, which is romanticy, with why choose. And then I think you came up with the fairy tale retelling part. Yeah, we we were throwing a whole bunch of ideas around of what we thought would work really well for a, a romanticy why choose. And I just um, I think randomly popped into my head because we're we're like huge Disney adults. We mm-hmm. love anything Disney, mm-hmm. you know. And I think you know many of us can uh, who I think now love. Uh, um, these sort of dark romance books can say that Beauty and the Beast was a formative experience (laughs) for us. And I just thought, well, like it had all these things that we love, a woman coming into a new place that she is not sure of, you know, she's finding herself and we have an enchanted castle, but instead of one beast, we have four. And then we could, we thought, This also led so well into um, like playing with the idea of Faye and, uh, you know, that aspect. So we really were just like, let's combine all the things we love into one book and give it a shot. (laughs) Yeah, it was such a fun book to write and so easy to come out of us. Like it just involved really all of our favorite things. It absolutely shows how easy it was for you guys to write this because the the story's flawless. I I will 100%. I might be biased because it's my favorite, but I don't care. (laughs) Um, It it really is a flawless story. And then when you merge it into book two, book two just flows so naturally. Like there was no, it's literally like the book just continued from book one. There was no um like transitional kind of hiccup or anything like that. It was just flawlessly perfect. Um, Your villains 
were so easy to hate except for there's one that I'm kind of like in this love-hate relationship with and that's Caspian and I'm like yes. I don't know if I love you or hate you or both um I I don't know I I'm I'm sitting on the fence with Caspian he, he's one of those ones where I'm like I don't know what to do with you yet I don't know if I like you I think I like you but I don't know that's the correct response I yeah. believe yeah some people are like oh I love him so much and I'm like did you see what he did in some of these things yeah, it's like, um, yeah. I don't know. But at the same time, I, I have to say that probably my favorite prince, even though they're, it, it's very hard to choose because I do love them all, but I think my favorite is Dayton. And I swear to God, I will be so angry with you both if you hurt Dayton. Uh, <laughs> oh, I don't Dayton. like the sound of that. Oh, no. Uh, well, book three is coming. Oh, is book three Dayton's? Yeah. That was like one of my later uh, questions. Book three isn't technically Dayton's, but he okay. actually a very um more prominent role than we initially thought in the book so yeah he, i mean all the princes are in it but he has a very interesting storyline in book three is yeah. all i'll say okay but, yeah okay <laughs> that that's that's fair but don't hurt dayton he's awesome <laughs> he's, he's softer inside than he likes to put out with like his muscles oh yeah it shows yeah it, it shows it, it shows that especially with his relationship with farron and mm -hmm. um i hope i'm pronouncing farron's name correctly but, yeah you got um, it <laughs> yeah he their relationship you see that kind of softer side with him which is just so great and it's like uh and of course, you know, I'm sure you guys have beautiful imagery with, that kind of uh, comes with all of the characters, but he will forever be Finnick in my brain. That's how he <laughs> looks. He looks exactly like Finnick from The Hunger Games. Totally. And yeah, it's funny, actually, because that wasn't our initial thought. And then someone, I think, tagged us in a TikTok of Finnick and was mm -hmm. like, it's Dayton. And we're like, oh, my gosh, it is Dayton. <laughs> that is him. So, yeah, we... <laughs> The fan casting is so fun. <laughs> the fan casting is definitely fun. And I I love Ez as well. I, I would love to see more of Ez kind of come out of the woodwork. And I know there's a lot of him that comes out of the woodwork in book two. But I really want to just, oh, he he's so, they're all perfect. Oh, my God. Like, how did you guys create such beautiful, perfect characters? All of them. Even Kel, who in the beginning of book two i wanted to throw my kindle across the room because i was so mad at him and i'm like what is wrong with you get your head out of your ass oh it, I'll yeah. that response a lot. Yes. especially as i'm writing him i'm like why are you like this but that's just how he comes across on the page and he's I perfect think, um, in his uh, own way though <laughs> he's he's doing his best that's what we say and he's got a long way to go for he sure he does he does he does yeah. so kind of segueing into me talking about my favorite princess do you guys have a favorite and i know they're all your 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 book babies and that's fine but do you have a favorite that you're just like i don't want to call him my favorite but he really is <laughs> It's so hard because I love them all. Um, and I think that's why like they're so special is because like we chose like four princes or maybe five princes <laughs> mm -hmm. of like our ideal sort of men with such distinct personalities. And I think they, their flaws also make them, um, their flaws make them very like relatable. And yes. so they're not just perfect. Um, but if I had to choose a favorite, I will, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I would have to say Caspian, and I just think there's oh, a lot more okay. below the surface that people <laughs> might not see yet. So I'm a little bit biased on that, but uh, I'm always uh, going for usually the dark villain that, character. That's fair. So that's fair. It started with you know like Anakin and Revenge of the Sith, and I haven't. <laughs> been that, so. <laughs> so yeah. um, what? Who is your favorite? My favorite, uh, it is hard, but I do have a real soft spot for Ez, um, just yeah. because I think he's got some really fun tropes to play with. And, yes. you know, he was, he was our most risky choice because we weren't sure how people would really, you know, respond to the mask wearing or the helmet wearing and not being able to see his face. But that's been a really fun aspect to play with. And I love a character who's like, rock hard on the outside and super gooey on the inside and um and we get to see a ton of ez in book three and i think it's gonna be um it's gonna be really fun to explore all of that with him oh i cannot wait oh my <laughs> gosh i cannot wait okay so i have to ask this for my bestie when is the audiobook for book two coming out 
that is coming out fall 2023. So okay. probably um, November. Probably early November. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Once we get back from our narrators, we're super excited to hear their take on it. We thought they did um, like such a performance for book one with like the voices and yeah, we are a huge audiobook listeners too. So we're very excited for book two to happen. <laughs> Well, I know that, you know, some authors are like, they put out just like one audiobook to see how it does. And then they're just like, yeah, I might do the others. I might not. And so thank you for putting out book two. <laughs> I hope you do it with all of them. Um, because it, otherwise he'll be like, you know, cliffhangered on the whole series because he won't read the books otherwise. But yeah, so we're planning to do audio for all of them. It's just, yeah. they usually take a bit longer. Um, just because we have to like work around our schedule when we yeah. can get the file and like audiobook narrator schedules too. And then processing and proofreading it's a whole process but it's so worth it and I absolutely love audiobooks oh I'm so excited yeah. for it um so yeah if you guys are, who are listening to the show if you're an audiobook audiobook listener sorry the words try to all come out at once there for a second <laughs> um if you are an audiobook listener uh the book will be available hopefully this November so make sure you stay tuned for that mark your calendars whatever you got to do just go get the book get just go buy the book, all the books, <laughs> every copy of it, which is funny because I am somebody that will buy a book on Kindle, which I've pre-ordered. Um, What is it? Forged by Malice, uh, the third book three. I've already pre-ordered that one. And oh. I've bought hard copies of the first two books because I had to have them. I have to have the whole series on my shelf now because <laughs> they are favorites. <laughs> oh, thank, you. thank you. Yeah. We find like, um, you know, with TikTok and Instagram, people love showcasing beautiful covers so it's been so fun seeing the the paperbacks in people's hands and, and you know people sometimes like send annotations um mm -hmm. of like things and like it's such a creative world like uh authors now getting to like interact with readers in like a whole new way with social media I think in the last few years and seeing the collections it's like very very cool it's really fun watching on TikTok. I, I don't get on Instagram as much as I should, but it's really fun watching on TikTok, especially when you all put out videos and all that and like mm -hmm. your own little clips. And it's just like you're teasing this and you're teasing that. And mm -hmm. I'm just like, oh, I love you. I, I already love you guys for writing the books. But you don't have to make me love you more. It's already there. I promise. <laughs> I feel like I, I torture readers a bit with like, you the do, but it's the TikTok best of ways. Like, yeah, they secretly like it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's the best of ways it's like oh are you gonna really like what this happens here and it's like i don't know am i am i gonna need therapy yeah. after this book yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but it's such a good series oh my god is it so good and i love the way that you guys are able to not only bring so much personality to each of the characters but the world building Oh my God, the world building. It's, you paint it so perfectly that you can see every detail, you know, all the different stone columns, the thorns, the briars, everything, the, even down to the mushrooms and the frost. It was just absolutely exquisite how well you guys were able to pull that off. And, you know, sometimes that's not easy for authors. Authors sometimes can't pull that off. They can pull off the dialogue, they can pull off the characters, but you guys just did it all exquisitely. Oh, thank, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, the world building has definitely been fun to like make this universe to play in. And I think like it came um, easy to us because we grew up like huge high fantasy fans. So our dad read us when we were kids, um, like the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Mm -hmm. And that was like a formative memory and the movies there um, and Star Wars and seeing all the different planets is another huge favorite of ours. And just reading like so many fantasy books so getting to make our own world um has like always been like a big dream and then making it like fey and beautiful is uh, is a lot of fun I think yeah, yeah I think we we just had so much fun with the seasonal aspect mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know that's why we're so excited each book is gonna feature um most heavily one specific realm and so getting to dive into the different realms and say what is their life like in this realm what is the weather what's the the atmosphere what's the vibe all of that has been so much fun and you know I think it's also fun for readers to choose mm -hmm. oh what 
what season do I think I would be from or what realm yeah. do I think I would be from and to sort of feel attached to one over the other is kind yeah. of a fun aspect as well yeah and we both we um put world building like really big into like our creative process so like before mm-hmm. we even write the outline we have like big world building days and Elizabeth's husband is a really big fantasy fan too and he often helps us with the names and like different aspects and helps us answer like the hard questions mm-hmm. like oh like well why would they be doing that there and diving in so it's like a fun really fun part of the process too (laughs) oh that is so amazing I love every aspect of that that is so cool so let's talk a little bit about book three and obviously because book three is not out and is coming out later Mm -hmm. this year I think it's later this year yeah um and can you tease who is what realm are we going to be in for book three can you tease that Yes. yes, we are going to the spring realm. To <gasps> We're going to be in Ezra's realm. Oh my God. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm being a fangirl in everybody's ears. Oh my God. I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah. So if book two is Farron's book, book three is Ezra's book. And what we're really excited to explore talking about the world building in the spring realm is like the duality of like the delicateness of like flowers and nature with kind of the hardness of the spring realm people, as you see, like Ez is in full armor. Um, Mm -hmm. we've kind of teased like they forge a lot of weapons and steel and armor there so it's kind of a very cool world that we've been playing in for the last couple weeks as we've been writing the first draft oh I'm so excited for you guys (laughs) and I'm so excited for the book obviously the I I as holds a special place they all do (laughs) I I honestly like this one it's like I'm seeing more of Dayton. So it's like I in book two yeah. I was more in love with Dayton and obviously I love them all, but um Ez just has that special little glimmer that I'm like, I need to know yeah. more about you. I mean he, <laughs> he's, he's mysterious. I, yeah. He to me is Mando. And yeah. Mando has the same kind of connection to me, which is so great and I love that. Um and I have like imagery of all of the you know, my own fan casting. So he's Mando, mm-hmm. uh Finnick is uh Dayton, uh, Daniel Jackson from Stargate is Farron. Ooh, and never seen Stargate. I'll have to yeah. look them up. <laughs> uh, look up SG One, Daniel Jackson. They they mesh perfectly in my eyes. Okay. Um, great show. Also, like if you, I've if heard you like it's it, amazing. Yeah, uh, it's aged a little, but not bad. But it's really, really good. I uh, I think you guys will really enjoy it. And the, obviously, it's kind of like Star Wars, where you get to see all the different worlds. And you get to see the different interactions and there's like deity work in there. It's really good. Watch the show. You'll like it. Okay. <laughs> um, oh. And then Kel for me was kind of the tricky one to kind of like fan cast. And so he was somewhere between the Witcher and um, he had a little bit of Damon vibes from House of the Dragon. Oh, yes. Um, yes. Yeah, totally. so he's oh, kind of a hair. cross between the two of them, and which is wonderful, and I love it. And Caspian is Hook from Once Upon a Time. Oh, I mean, <laughs> another show I've yeah. never seen. I've never seen, seen it, but I know the character. Like, yeah, I've heard of him. Same. I have. I don't know why I've never seen it. It seems right up my alley, but I've seen like enough TikTok edits of Hook to be mm-hmm. like, oh yeah, 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 you're our type of character. <laughs> Yeah. He, he's really good and for me once upon a time i tried to get into it and i just i couldn't get past the first season um so i think once upon a time is kind of a hit or miss for a lot of people so i bid you good luck if you like it awesome if right. you don't well you know just watch for hook i guess exactly <laughs> yeah. Just... <laughs> so yeah th- those are my fan cast i really hope that something terrible happens to perth <laughs> mm, I, he's, he's one of the villains that I'm just like I wouldn't mind watching you get dismembered like right. at all like it would not bother me one bit <laughs> yeah, absolutely would not bother me yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah he's another one of those ones that can just go away <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we haven't seen the last of him, um, and we will see more of a new villain in oh. yeah. I'm very excited, and we saw a tease of them in woven by gold too so they'll play a bigger part um edge i'm excited to explore yes uh, i'm excited for that (laughs) too uh yes and also if everybody who's listening to this episode if you don't like spicy books these are not your books just for the record (laughs) the spice (laughs) in these books is chef's kiss 
her yeah. friendship. <laughs> um, it also does have some male on male um, and male on female and male male and female and male male. J- just read your trigger warnings. Make sure you understand that um, yeah. before you dive into them. But they're so good <laughs> so good my husband also reads fantasy romance and uh he reads all the romance books with me because he realizes that they're a hidden gem um his first introduction to the world of uh book talk books was priest by sir uh sierra simone oh i haven't yeah. read that one but I've, i see oh it all my god yeah. you need to read yeah, it I, yeah. <laughs> i've heard it's amazing and incredible incredibly spicy <laughs> it's like 95 percent smut oh, <laughs> yeah. love in that. the best of ways though it does have a plot like it's there the plot's there but uh the smut is top tier i my favorite scene and i'm not going to spoil this for anybody but um when you get to the holy oil scene you'll know what i'm talking about okay yeah it's on my tbr for sure yeah so good so so good uh just exquisite book but very steamy but yeah y'all did the spice perfectly in your books as well oh. just whew, the the cheese and like the <laughs> angstiness and it, the wanting to, oh it's just exquisite <laughs> oh i the love very, it like, slow burn. <laughs> yes <laughs> with spice <laughs> Uh, spicy slow burn i think the slow burn my favorite slow burn scene from book two was the forest where they're all having to help lace unlace and lace up her corset yeah. oh yes mm, that was <laughs> that was kind of fun the first we really see of all four <laughs> um, with together, Rosa, yeah. yeah yeah so that oh was it was so fun. good i i was just like oh all four all four we're doing all four yes <laughs> 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 just a little taste of things to come yes oh huh? so so good yeah uh so uh now kind of jumping into personal lives a little bit i saw on your biographies that you guys play D. so <laughs> yes, as an dude. avid D D plan i am gonna ask what's your favorite class to play and what's your favorite system to play in well we play so I play um we've been playing the same campaign for the last six years which oh my gosh that's um, a long running campaign sounds, it sounds crazy we play um we're the players and then my husband is our dungeon master so it's just um, the three of us so yeah <laughs> we don't like have to worry about people not showing up or like scheduling dates too much <laughs> yes so we're always down to play and um so we've been playing like this same epic storyline for all those years um so my character is a druid she's an elf druid um and we play we play in Faerun, but my husband sort of homebrews it as well. Oh, so it's sort yeah. of a mash, mishmash of of 5e homebrew, you know, all of that. So yeah, we we have so much yeah. fun. Yeah, my character is a half elf ranger and yeah, he's a lot of fun to play. I when I originally created him way back in the day, I wanted someone who was like half Aragorn half Legolas and oh that's perfect yeah Yeah. (laughs) and I had always like I'd played a lot of campaigns before and I'd always been like an elven princess so I'm like maybe I'll try playing like a boy character for fun and now I've been with the same character for six years but um it's a lot of fun and uh, we're pretty high level now so the spells you can do are pretty epic and yeah it's so great to just like if we joke because when we were kids we would always play Barbie dolls and Mm -hmm. we'd have like really epic adventures with the Barbie dolls. We say like D and D is like adult Barbies or like adult make believe. <laughs> it's just so much fun <laughs> with fantasy and all that. It is so much fun to play <laughs> and I've gotten to play in many, many different um, you know, game worlds, I guess you could say. And I think probably the longest game that we ever did was a Star Wars game. It was in the Star Wars oh, uh D twenty system. Oh and my gosh, amazing. My husband and I um both our characters ended up falling in love with each other and then he oh. didn't tell me that he was going to kill off his character no. and i literally ugly cried in the middle of our game because he killed off his character i didn't talk to my husband for two days i was so mad. fair enough <laughs> yeah that's devastating <laughs> the, i i think the emotions i feel in game are so real yeah. like i yeah i totally really when that. i dm ends us on a cliffhanger and i'm like what we can't play for two weeks and you're just dangling <laughs> my favorite npc above this monster <laughs> <I know. laughs> 
<laughs> it's so true. Yeah. Um, but now we have a pact in our marriage that I told him if he ever kills up a character that I fall in love with ever again, that uh, he might end up six feet under. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough, for sure. <laughs> and it was funny, in one of the other Star Wars games that he was running, uh, he created a character that was supposed to be my bodyguard. And of course he creates a f- stupid character that I'm going to fall madly in love with. <laughs> and I end up falling in love with him. And his- this character was supposed to be a Mandalorian. He doesn't fall in love with anybody, but he ends up falling in love with me. Yeah. And oh. I told him, I said, if you kill him off, you're going to be in so much trouble. Right? <laughs> oh my gosh, that sounds epic. Is he still alive? Uh, the character at the end of the game was still alive. They oh, they had a wonderful family and everything, and it was great and it was beautiful oh, and go. all that. Um, he, he ended up taking his uh, whole rightful places, one of the leaders of the Mandalorian um, like tribes and all this, and she was by his side, and it was great. It was wonderful. Oh, that's beautiful. Um, but yeah, it was it was a really great game, and yeah, the, there's just so many great scenes that we did, and I've run a few, but I haven't run many. Um, and probably my most su- successful campaign was actually through the Unknown Armies campaign series. Oh. Um, we did this wonderful horror game, and uh, it was interesting. It was called Darkest Desires, and we had a lot of fun with it. So. I That's did record it originally on Twitch, but I had lost the, all the videos because they expired and I didn't get them downloaded to YouTube and all that before oh, it no. did. But yeah, it was a good time. So it's always fun meeting more D&D players. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It's, yeah, <laughs> it's so much fun. It's and I feel like, game. you know, I think a lot of people would love it, but they don't give it a chance because, you know, D&D has such a reputation of being difficult to play or... Mm-hmm super nerdy mm-hmm. but i think so many people would love it if they just gave it a, a chance yeah <laughs> honestly it's true and that was kind of one of the things that like the when we ran the unknown armies campaign we had a couple of people who had never played D D or done you know tabletop or anything like that and the good thing about um unknown armies it was all d20 so you didn't have all the other dice that you had to worry about and all that stuff and so it right. was just everything was a d20 and which made it a lot easier for them and i like my games to be more role play based versus combat based and Thanks, so they yeah. did really well doing that and we had some really great stories and really great characters and so many amazing folks that came in and it was it was a good time it was a good time for me running it for the first time and i enjoyed it very much but uh I, I think probably my favorite system is going to be the star wars system the star wars system was just so much fun cuz you can do so much with it Oh yeah, that sounds like such a blast. We've always talked about doing it, but like a more sci-fi campaign. Yeah, but we've been in our for so long. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to get out of a system that you've been playing for so long and yeah. that you, you've uh, kind of fallen for, and then it's like, oh, I have to give up that character. Does that mean yeah. the character's so we... dead? Like, what do I, I do with it <laughs> after so I'm long? Like I... I'm too attached now. <laughs> it's so true. Um, so my one of my last couple, I have a couple more questions for you, but one of my last questions is what are you guys reading that you would recommend to everybody? Right now I'm reading um, The Serpent and the Wings of Night by Chris oh, Broadbent. Such a good book. And I'm sure everyone has, everyone and their dog has read this book at this point. So I feel like I'm a little behind the times, but it's just so fun. I'm not so far through it yet, but it's giving me like vampire meets hunger game vibes. Mm -hmm. And it's just so fun. And um, yeah, I, I love it. This is like my favorite genre is this, you know, Mm -hmm. fantasy romance genre. So it's just such a blast. I'm really enjoying it. Um, yeah, for me, I am. I just finished, probably like everyone, I just finished Fourth Wayne, and I thought it was such a blast. It was a lot of fun, and it was almost nostalgic in a way. Like, it reminded me a bit of Aragon and, like, some of those, like, early 2010 YA books, but mm-hmm. with, like, Spice, and the world building was such a blast, and, yeah, it's a really fun book. Fourth Wayne was fantastic when I got to the point with it that, um... I was ready to get book two. I was like, yeah, I'm going to have to just go ahead and pre-order this. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. And my <laughs> husband was like, you're getting the hardback one, right? And I was like, yeah. Because he read it before <laughs> I did. He grabbed it and ran away with the book before I could even open oh it. <laughs> I came out from the bookstore with it because I, of course, the sprayed edges you have to have. And right. so I was like, I don't want this. And 
digital form. I want this in hardback. And he's like, okay. And so he grabbed it and he read the cover and he's like, yeah, you're not reading this first. And I was like, <laughs> I bought that to read it. Really? Yeah. And he's like, go read the other books, which I had bought Priest at the same time. And so I read Priest first and and then we ended up trading afterwards. And he was like, yeah. Yeah, that was totally worth it. <laughs> yeah. That's so fun. You can share books. I love that. We have book dates, but the problem is he reads books. Like he can read like a 500 page book in like two days. Oh and my it'll gosh. take me like a week and a half. Yeah, uh, I'm, a, so, I'm a slower reader like that. <laughs> uh, but he reads really quick. So does my daughter. My daughter will go through four or five books a week. So wow. yeah, she she is a voracious little bookworm. And Aww. which is great because, you know, I'm like, yes, go read and fill your mind with wonderful words and stories and educate yourself <laughs> and all this other stuff. But now it's getting to the point it's like you have read everything for your age group and now i have to search really hard to find books that are appropriate for her age right because she's only 11 and i'm like oh yeah. no <laughs> well let's see you read lord of the rings you read harry potter you read fable haven you read every all the other ones and she's yeah. like yeah i read all of rick reardon's and i was like yes yes you have multiple times oh my gosh i was gonna say percy jackson will keep her busy for at least a week or so but she's read oh, percy no. jackson like all the percy jackson and olympian books she's read read them probably four times um oh the magnus chase ones i want to say she's read the series six times wow. has she read like i think it's shannon mayer what are those called like secrets of the lost city um i think she oh, read those yeah oh, shannon messenger shannon, shannon messenger that's, that's who it, it is yeah those she... are folks um if you didn't know in our day jobs we are like teachers so oh, nice um, and so those are books I always recommend to kids that age too. Um, she's also read Chronicles of Narnia and she's read, Aww. she's read everything and it's everything. like, okay. <laughs> so I take her to the bookstore and I'm like, okay, go see what you can find. And so she'll bring me books and she's like, is this age appropriate? And I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Let me read the synopsis. <laughs> oh, and I, I, you know, I have House of Night and all that on my bookshelves and she's like, can I read those? And I'm like, no. Not yet. Not yet. Wait a <laughs> so yeah, there's so many books that she wants to read, and um, my husband goes through books faster than I can even keep up. I I think he's read probably since I bought his Kindle for him for Father's Day. He's probably read maybe two hundred books already. Oh my that's gosh, crazy. that's yeah. amazing! Yeah. And I'm like, I read books for you know because podcasting is part of my day job and i'm like i do this and i'm like i can't even keep up with you jeez yeah. can you slow down a little <laughs> bit <laughs> i feel that i'm like oh i want to read more and you know be as in touch with the market as i can and experience all these amazing books but it's so hard to to keep up everything <laughs> it is very hard to keep up with everything and it, book talk does not help my tbr gets no. longer and longer every time i turn on tiktok and it's like really there's more i probably add four or five books to my tbr by the end of my session on tiktok and it's like right yeah, it's i'm totally never gonna get so to these dangerous. books the tbr is gonna be longer than me but before yeah. it's over and done with it i'll never get through them all um, right but yeah it's so so good so awesome and now my next question is i know you guys just had a book signing do you have any more events coming up that you would like to promote and talk about so people can find you connect with you come get their book signed etc yeah, we have one more uh, event coming up, but it's not until October of next year, but it's uh, books, books, gowns, and crowns, Ooh. or books, sorry, books, crowns, and gowns, um, which is a massive book convention that's happening in Seattle. And it's not just a book convention, but it also combines like a fantasy ball. Mm -hmm. So people come dressed up in their, their fantasy gowns, and it sounds like it's going to be so much fun. So we'll be signing at that and tickets do go on sale on July 14th. Um, and they've got a whole bunch of different tiers and it sounds like it's going to be such a blast. So we're so excited. Yeah, and the theme for this one is Enchanted Forest and there's a ton of other amazing authors attending. So many I can't wait to meet that I've only chatted with online. Um, so I am very, very excited to go and we'll be signing books and have books for sale there too. Oh my gosh. I saw the pictures or the pictures and videos of the one from this year. So I'm <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing all of that next year. That'll be really cool. I wish I could go, but that's a little far away and unfortunately my immune system doesn't let me travel the way I'd like to. So Aww, uh, yeah, well we're hoping to go to as many events as we can possibly fit in. Yeah, those are that yeah. the only confirmed event yet, but I'm hoping we'll have more opportunities for like signing and meeting readers. Um 
in the future too that will be very cool so if you guys are in the seattle area or if you're willing to travel to seattle make sure you guys stay on top of that and if i can get the link i will put it in the show description if not um probably a quick google search will help you find what you were looking for and if you want to attend absolutely do it and Meet Elizabeth and Helen and all the other amazing authors that are going to be there. I know there were a ton of amazing authors that were there this year, so it will be an amazing event, and I wish I could be there as well, but I will be there in spirit, so. <laughs> yes, we'll post lots of pictures and videos, and I'm sure uh, the event will as well. Yes, it will be a wonderful experience, I'm sure. So uh, there are seven books in the series. You've got one coming out next year. Are we looking like a book a year, two books a year? What can everybody kind of tentatively expect uh we basically we're gonna try and put them out um as fast as we can um because like we absolutely love the story and we know readers are hungry for it but the story will always come first for us and Mm -hmm. making the best possible version which is why each book has had a longer wait period not only are the books getting longer the stories are getting more complex and as it grows we find um just like being online and being interacting with fans and all this stuff is amazing, but it doesn't lead to as much writing time Mm -hmm. as before, (laughs) which is like a blessing. And, um, and, uh, yeah, I don't know what I'm saying, but basically, (laughs) uh, we would like to try and get them out every six months or so. Um, I think is going forward is what we would aim for, but no promises. Yeah, no, no promises. Um, but that's, what we would love to do is every six months. That's why I said tentative our, yeah. expectations. Yeah. Because yeah. those yeah. will change. Um, totally. <laughs> as the writing process goes through, and especially editing and production costs, or not costs, production uh, expectations will change as everything mm-hmm. goes and all that. Um, also, are we going to continue with the really pretty themed covers? We are. We actually Good. have just been Good. chatting with our cover designer and sending her everything for book three and book four. And yeah, she she's amazing. She really uh, takes the wheel with these and um, we just give her inspo and she just goes for it. So she's been absolutely amazing. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Those are going to be so great. Well, Elizabeth and Helen, this has been an absolute blast talking to you. Um, Obviously, everybody can find you on TikTok. They can find you on Insta and all those places. All of the links to their profiles will be on in the show description for everybody. The book links will be there as well. Go buy the book. This is the shameless Mm -hmm. plug that you all hear me talk about in every one of my episodes, whether it's this show or Pagan's Witchy Corner. You hear me talk about the shameless plug. And you have heard me talk about the shameless plug for these books way too much. So I'm going to keep this one short. Go buy them. You won't regret it. Please. They are awesome. I can't recommend them enough. (laughs) For me to say that they are my book, my favorite books of all time is the highest praise I could possibly ever give to a series because the book that was up there before was there for 20 years. So (laughs) for it to get kicked out of the the number one spot, (laughs) actually it's been kicked down to like number five now, but uh, yeah, (laughs) for me to say that is the highest praise I can possibly give to a book series. So go buy the books, everybody. Oh, thank you so much for reading and for thank you so much for and like it was just so much fun chatting with you today. We're so happy to be on this podcast. It was an absolute pleasure. I hope you guys will come back as soon as book three comes out or as soon as you are available because I know you guys are going to be like swamped with production and media stuff and all that good stuff. But as soon as you are available when book three comes out, I hope you come back so we can talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. It's so much fun. Thank you for chatting about our book. It's our yeah. favorite thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, it has been wonderful. So everybody go buy the books, check out Elizabeth and Helen all over social media, follow them, keep in touch with them. They're amazing humans and everyone happy reading and stay safe. We'll talk very soon. Bye-bye everyone.